In this video, I'm going to go over the SI measurement system. The International System of Units, the SI system, is a system of units of measurement consisting of seven base units. All right, whenever you're recording length and you're sharing those uh, that data with others, uh, you want to always uh, record your measurements in your lab notebook with uh, these particular units. Uh, so length would be in meters. Your mass is in kilograms, and that gets a lot of people stumped sometimes, where it is actually kilograms, not grams. Uh, so you would need to convert in those cases whenever you're sharing your uh, information. Time is in seconds. Electrical current is in ampere. Your temperature is in Kelvin, and that is the absolute scale. They're based on an absolute zero, so it is in Kelvin, not Celsius. Uh, luminous intensity, which is candelas, and the amount of substance, which is moles. Uh, it's a mostly, uh, most widely used system of measurement, and the United States is the only industrialized nation that has not adopted this SI system, which, as you know, we use the U.S. Uh, customary system, which you've already learned. So it's often referred to as the metric scale. Right? The prefixes indicate an energy power of 10. And that's why a lot of people prefer to use the metrical, metric scale is because you can just move a decimal. Multiply, divide, whatever, by 10. Um, because they are all, like if I'm going to say I have 10 meters, well, that's the same thing as 1 decameter because it's just to the power of 1, 10. All right. So uh, you've probably already seen milli to kilo in other science classes and mega, giga, and tera you've heard of through computers, right? a megabyte. Um, and then with the prefixes that are a little smaller, the micro, nano, and pico, you've probably heard of the micro and nano, pico is just much smaller than that. Uh, but these are the most common ones that you'll hear and that you'll use with the metric system. Right, so some common sizes. Uh, human hair would be about 0.1 millimeters. Uh, two sheets of paper, its thickness would be about 0.2 millimeters. And then a small paper clip would be about 0.8 millimeters. And when recording those measurements, um, always include, of course, a value. And then you're also going to include units. And units are very important. You have to have units because if you say like 1 or you say 10, I don't know if you're talking about, again, you know, say decameter or a meter or you might even be talking about a kilometer. That's such a big difference that it has to have a unit or it is incorrect. Um, and also that measurement always has to have an uncertainty, which we talked about before uh, in the video about the U.S. customary uh, system, where we talked about significant digits, that that last digit is always considered your error or your uncertainty, all right, that best estimate. All right, again, those general rules, just a reminder that the digital instruments, you're going to record, uh, and you're going to read and record all digits, including zeros after the decimal point, exactly as displayed. And the decimal scale instruments, uh, you're going to record all the digits that you can certainly determine from the scale markings and estimate one more digit. And that uh, is like a graduated cylinder. It would be a centimeter ruler, uh, something like that, where you can read all of the definite certain values and then you can have an estimated guess. Is it right on that line? You would add a zero, a little over, you might add a one, uh, which I'll show you a little bit more uh, in the next uh, few slides. All right, so here's a typical metric scale ruler. All right, it often includes a 30 plus centimeter graduated scale. Each centimeter is graduated into 10 millimeters, all right, like this. The millimeter is the smallest increment found on a typical metric scale. Okay, so the next largest line, so here's the smallest ones. Those are your millimeters. This one here in the middle is just a little longer. It's for the five millimeters. It helps you in reading just so you know, oh, there's the five. And then you can start from here if it's a little bit longer. You could be like five, six, seven, and seven. have to count all of these to figure out where the five is. All right, so the largest markings on a metric scale represent centimeters. These are the only marks that are actually numbered. 
So each of the large numbers is centimeters. Everything in between would be millimeters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We know that 10 millimeters, just move the decimal one place, would be one centimeter. All right, so how long is this rectangle? Whenever we're reading the ruler, we know for certainty the three. Okay. Let's bring it in a little closer here. So we know for certain the three, and then here's the five, six, seven, eight. So we know 3.8 for certain. Now this right here is about halfway in between. This is your uncertain. You know it's not right on the four. Or, I'm sorry, you know it's not right on the 3.8. You know that it's a little over the 8. So I'm thinking it's probably about 3.84, 3.85, something like that. It's about halfway in between, maybe a little less. Either one would actually be correct because that last digit is that estimate. All right, so let's see what it says. Again, we know for certain 3. We know for certain 8, because it's in between the two. I really think it's about halfway in between. So the best estimate for this one is 3.84. Again, 3.85 would have been fine, 3.83. As long as that last number is your uncertainty, it's your guess, uh, it cannot be wrong. It's, it's your guess, it's your estimate. But the 3.8 is exact, and it is certain. Okay, again, a 3.8 is your certain digits, and the 4 was your estimate or your error. All right, how would you record the length of this rectangle? Let's look a little closer. Okay, so our certain digits is a 6.123. So 6.3 is certain, and then it looks just a little bit longer. I'm going to go with maybe 6.32. Right on this one, it uh, says it's 6.33. Uh, again, 6.32, 6.33 are the same thing because that last number is that estimate. All right, so how many significant figures or significant digits? There are three. One, two, three. All right, let's go ahead and read these. All right, my rectangle A is 0.4. I think it's slightly over the four, so I would go with three, or excuse me, 0 0.41. On B, I would say 1.9. It looks like it's right on the line, so I'm going to go with 1.90. C, three is definite, so 3.9. Seven, I think it's about halfway in between, so we're going to say 3.75. D, certain is 6.2. Looks like it's just a little bit over. Um, looks like it's just maybe a little bit over the half. So I'm going to go with 6.28. Again, that's a uh, estimate on the end. And then E would be 7. Point three. It looks like it's right on, so I'm going to go with seven point. No, one, two, three. Yep, seven point three zero. Okay, so next you're going to be practicing this on one of the activities, and also uh, watch that Khan Academy video about significant figures, so you can get some more understanding on it.